So we'll go work on uh, waypoint left. Yep. Creating videos for DCS can be a fun and rewarding experience, but getting it all working can be a frustrating string of trial and error. How can I record the output from DCS? I fly VFR, VR and there are these black parts missing from around the game window. How do I get rid of these? Something is too loud in the recording. How can I fix that? Can I fix that? What should I even use to record this all? Should I use Shadow Play, OBS, something else? I spent a fair amount of time trying to figure out how to record the game's video and audio in a manner which would allow me to make videos which I enjoy watching. I eventually got things zeroed in after asking around, watching videos from others, and iterations of various settings. I've seen questions asked to the community as well as directed at me asking for help, so I wanted to share what I've learned with the hopes that it can help current and future content creators on their journey. Oh, one more thing. I would like to say to those wanting to make their own videos, focus on making videos which you love watching and want to watch over and over. If you focus on trying to please everyone or catering to this and that, you will not have fun and your quality will suffer. I watch my videos many times after making them. They entertain me and I learn a lot from my mistakes to be corrected in future flights. All right, enough of me talking. Let's get this thing in the air and uh, see how, uh, how I do all this stuff. See you there. All right, let's get the audio stuff set up. This is kind of the, the underlying stuff you're going to need in order to have separate uh, audio channels in OBS to separate out various uh, programs. So I went to uh, VB Audio, and I'll have a link in the notes. Go to Audio Apps. These are the guys that make that voice meter, banana, and potato. Um, and there's a free download, so you can get a single uh, virtual audio cable. Uh, I grabbed actually the other two down here, so I have a total of five. And each one of these, you click down here to, to donate to download it. I, I just did $5. Um, when I got them, I didn't know if I was going to be able to use it effectively. It actually works really well. And uh, once you have those on your system, it's as simple as just opening it up and running the installer. Right. Uh, which, so I, I ran through the installer, installer for all of these. It's basically the same process. And that will give you um, additional output and input options in your sound settings. All right, so I have A, or, or A, B, C, and D, and then I have the, um, the free one, which is just cable input here. So I have a total of five. Okay, so it's important to understand, uh, you know, you're looking at cable A, B, C, D, or just cable uh, when you're going to be setting up your uh, sound output. All right, so we've got our sound uh, audio cables or virtual audio cables configured. What do we do with those? Well, this is where we're going to do some pretty cool stuff. So if we look at the SRS uh, client here, what you can see is I've selected cable A as my um, output from SRS to the input on cable A. So when you uh, open up SRS, you can just pick whichever one you want. I just started with A, but you can see we have uh, A, B, C, and D, and then just the, that free one. So I chose A, and then there's the mic output. And this is when you're talking in SRS, you can have it uh, send your voice output to whatever you want. You can actually listen to it on your headphones if you want. It'll drive you crazy, but so I chose cable B. So A is for everybody talking, except for me. 
you know, you know, I don't hear my voice on that. And then B is when I, when I talk into the microphone, it's going to uh, route that through to cable B. And that's where my voice has that staticky, you know, sound, sound like you're talking on the radio. And that's all you need to really do in here. Uh, if you want, you can kind of uh, do audio preview. And we'll just have a look down below where I have it already set up. So SRS main. Now watch what happens when I do audio preview. You can see uh, you can have my voice is showing up in there now as well. And it's causing some feedback. But that's it. That's uh, super easy to do. Now, one other program that I, I use this with is Voice Attack. And uh, with Voice Attack, it's really just to get that chatter uh, and also uh, the transmit beeps when I'm, when I'm doing stuff. Now, <clears throat> with Voice Attack, it's a little bit different for some reason. So I came in here, and this took me a while to figure out <clears throat> because I wasn't sure why it was working and it wasn't. So audio output type I did in integrated components, and I put cable C here and hit OK, and I'm done, right? Well, no. <laughs> for whatever reason, uh, that wasn't doing it. What you actually have to do is go back into the sound settings and go do uh, more sound settings. And I'll bring up this little window. Nope, that's not true. That comes back. That comes in later. <laughs> you need to do a, a volume mixer. And down here where you see voice attack, you need to come in and select the the, the cable that you're out. You want to output to. So I'm doing C, right? So I'll put the C here. And once you said that, you're done. You can just close this and, and, and you know, you're done with there. But you do need to restart voice attack for that to take effect. And restarting voice attack was the part that was getting me because I go around and change all these settings and nothing was working. So I won't belabor it, but that's what you need to do. You do need to go into sound settings for voice attack and, and change that. And it actually works really nicely. Um, I like getting the staticky sounds in voice attack. And then I can also um, work in my um, headset microphone. And you know, so you can hear me issue commands. And then you'll hear voice attacks responses um, to them. And that goes through that separate C channel. So we're almost done. So one other thing we need to do is we want is set it so that we can hear some of that stuff that's getting routed through to these audio cables. So if uh, you'll remember here, I came in here a moment ago, we need to go to more sound settings and come back here to recording. Now you need to find the audio cable that you set for everybody or all in SRS, which for us was cable A and go to properties. And then in here, you need to go to listen, and you need to select listen to this device. Because if you think about it, what's happening is, so people are talking in SRS, it gets pushed through to this virtual audio cable A, and then that's it. It's not going anywhere else. If you select this, it will also get um, uh, duplicated to your default playback device, which for me is my, my headset. Uh, if you want, you can specify you know, your speakers or something in here, but I just go with the default, and that's good. Now B, you remember, was my microphone, right, where I'm talking, and it, and it kind of duplicates that it, it, so you can hear me talking. You do not want to listen to this because you'll talk, and then you'll hear yourself coming in really loud in your headphones, and it's just, gonna, it's just a real mess. You're, you're gonna, and it's always, there's a slight lag to it. Um, so you don't want to be listening to that. The last one is for uh, voice attack. You want to come into properties here, and you do want to listen to that one because that's going to be like the, the background sound static or the beeps when you press um, your, uh, your button on the uh, controller to talk into voice attack. So you do want to use that. So that's, that's really it. That's all, I, that's all I have set here. And then once you've got all that stuff set, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Got the, uh, looks like a, was that SA8 or something? Altitude. Altitude. 
Got him targeted. Yeah, I got him. I got him. Alrighty. All right, so we got all that behind the scenes stuff taken care of with the sound. We've got our um, virtual audio cables installed. We've got the uh, applications configured to make use of them. Now let's get into OBS. So I'm just going to go through uh, setting up the scene, like uh, so it'll be similar to what I have here for DCS. So I'll create a new scene. We call this demo. And now we need to add in all of the sources. Uh, so one of the first things we're going to want to add is, uh, is DCS. So I'm just going to launch that in uh, just flat mode, non-VR mode, keep it simple. All right, so I've got uh, DCS uh, just running in the background right now. So I'm going to add in um, <clears throat> where is it? game capture. So select that. Let's call this uh, demo DCS. And uh, so I choose a specific window. And this is why you need to have DCS running. Choose that one. OK. And there we go. That's it running. Now let's add the audio from DCS. Now I like to use the application audio capture. Let's call this. DCS audio, and there we go. So now we've got the audio being fed in. Now we're going to add in the audio for all of our, our other sources. So audio output capture, and we'll call this one demo SRS all, and then um, A because that's my A cable. And it's good to name it like this so that you know how to match them up in, in like within here. So I know that cable A is going to be that. And there we go. We have that in there. Add another one. And it's as simple as just going through, collecting the, selecting the cables that you're using. And then we have one more. All right, so we've got all of these sources chosen here. And then that microphone uh, shows up in there as well, and that's my headset microphone. Um, so these uh, audio sources are all created. Okay, now that we've got our uh, scene identified and all the sources input, we want to uh, correctly set up the tracks uh, that those audio sources are going to re re record to. So we go to Edit and then Advanced Audio Properties. And you're going to see here by default, they get selected into all of those tracks. So just for making sure you don't miss anything, go through and delete them all. And then we're going to assign them to a track. 
So what I like to do is uh, the audio for the game, I throw into track one. And then SRS for everybody, I'll throw into track two. SRS me, I throw into track three. Voice attack, track four. Um, the microphone gets thrown into track five. I don't do anything with desktop audio. So that's just, uh, that's just there uh, because I wanted to have it handy for this. But usually I disable it completely in the global properties uh, for OBS. But uh, this is it here. So uh, everything else is good. Go ahead and close that. And now you're going to uh, record to the proper tracks. So the next thing we need to do is set uh, the video settings for our recording. So if we come into here and we go to video, this is where you're gonna set your base canvas and uh, output, as well as your uh, frames per second. Now when you create a new um, profile, that is like the, the overall profile, you typically will set these things, uh, but you can come in here and edit them. So I do 3840 by 2160, which is 4K, and I also uh, set it for 60 frames per second. Now, uh, after that, uh, we want to play with the output. So go to output, and uh, this is where you have you know, your different things, but I'm going to be doing recording. That's my, my thing. You can, if you do streaming, you can go play with your settings there. And I also set the output mode to advanced. So what you want to do is make sure that you're setting this stuff in a way that um, YouTube wants you to uh, bring uh, video into them, right? So if you come into uh, the uh, YouTube, um, if you Google YouTube uh, uh, video settings, you'll find uh, a page like this. I'll put this in the, the links. But this tells you all you need to know and you want to try and uh, stick with this because otherwise they need to uh, transcode it and change it and then you can lose some quality that way. So the container is MP4, that's what I'm recording in. They want H.264, which is what I'm using. I have an NVIDIA, so I'm using the NVIDIA encoder. If you have NVIDIA, uh, that's the, definitely the one you want to use. You get some better performance out of it. Um, the audio, whoops. I lost my web page. There we go. Um, let me slip that over there so I can find it easier. So the audio is, um, where is it? AAC, that's what I have. Now an important thing is you want to make sure you select all of your audio tracks because you want to, you want to make sure that you get six uh, tracks of audio recording into your OBS session. If you don't, you're going to be obviously missing out. And like if you didn't have one selected, we wouldn't be hearing the game audio. Or if two were missing, we'd be missing uh, everyone talking in SRS and so on. Uh, obviously, I don't have to do anything else there. And when you set um, the encoder, uh, the sorry, the video encoder, uh, you'll get some additional encoder settings down here. And this is where you uh, want to make sure that you're paying attention to uh, the bit rate that YouTube wants to see. So if we look at 4K at the resolution I'm shooting, uh, 53 to 68 megabits per second. Um, OBS lists it in kilobits, so you just need to add on, multiply that by 1,000. So it's 53,000 kilobits per second is my bit rate. I chose the bottom end of that just because I'm also, you know, using my system quite heavily for um, rendering the game. Um, all these other things you can play with, I would recommend having a look at the settings that I am have I use here. Uh, when I did two passes uh, full resolution, it really killed the recording uh, rate. It was just freezing. It was horrible. Um, high quality, because uh, I want better quality. This stuff, I just went with slow. I th you can play with these others. I think I tried some of these. I don't know if I had some issues with it, but um, this seems to be a good mix for me. Uh, I've got a you know, beefy system, so if you have uh, a system that um, maybe isn't as strong, you may need to play with some of these settings. 
Um, and that's, that's really it. Yeah, if you have any questions about this, certainly let me know. But now we're ready. We've got um, the audio set. We've got our recording our video set. And now all we have to do is get um, our window centered up how we want, and we're good to go, and we'll cover that next. That's all traffic, Psycho 1-1 one, one, inbound, runway 17 left, face to final. Do you just want to keep your load out, and then I'll go arms? Sure. So um, the last part you're going to need to do is to get your, um, your shot framed properly uh, f for recording. So this, uh, what I usually do is I'll load into a cockpit, um, maybe it's ready on the, on the you know, ready for takeoff type of thing. Uh, I use an instant action mission. And then I get it centered. I press my, uh, I just put my headset down, my VR headset, and then I center of the VR view. So this is just centered, looking straight forward. And this is obviously in DCS itself. So let's come out of that and uh, have a look at our recording window. So as you can see, because we have a, a 4K window, which is a rectangular aspect, um, and the, the rendered window for uh, the VR is much smaller. If you just ran with this, it'll record this, but then you're gonna have all this blank space, right? So what I do, and it's also gonna be square, if you, you know, you'll have to zoom in in your editing software, which you can do, uh, but what I prefer to do is to set the, um, the view here the way I want it, and, and then um, that way I don't have to play around with it in um, editing. So to do that, we just kind of come here and grab a corner. And if we drag this down, it'll, ex it'll extend it out and kind of snap. Now this is, would be a full screen uh, vertically, but look at that, we are still far off in the horizontal, right? Because we've got all this space over here because this is again a square aspect versus rectangular for the, um, for the video. So what I do is drag this and you just start dragging it all the way over until it clicks. And now we're good to go with that. Now let's drag this down so we can see what we're doing a bit better. So this has it squared away at the top and on the left and on the right. We've got a lot of video real estate that's down there. So do we necessarily want to capture everything that's in this top section? Well, not really, because just looking straight forward, this is the view we're going to have, right? So you're missing out on all of your instrumentation. Um, so you would I'd probably at least want to move it up a bit and get what I aim for is just to try to get most of the or all of the MFDs maybe down a bit more so that when I'm sitting there it's all good now you could go with this and you're you're all set right or you can maybe even move it up a bit 
But what I like to do is um, I like to zoom in a bit. It makes reading the cockpit much better. And um, like in the video, and um, and then it gets rid of this asymmetric center. Because if you look, this is the center of the screen right here, see? But we have all of this over here. It's never gonna be perfect because we're recording one eye in VR, but so what I like to do is I'll zoom in a bit more like this. And then I always keep that left side, like so I'm getting everything from the left. I don't push it off like that because it's, it's offset enough as it is. So that's my left boundary is always sitting there. But kind of finding a good balance with the zoom view versus um, and, and the horizontal, because you don't want to give up too much of that, that horizontal view here. I mean, you can keep zooming in all the way, but if you look, this seems like a pretty decent setting right here, right? Now, one, one thing you'll want to do, so, you know, I would set this, record, hop in the aircraft, put your headset on, record, and just sit there looking around, look straight ahead and, and stare for a while because uh, you'll want to try, try and get a, a view of it in the playback to make sure it's where you want it. But ultimately, um, you're going to play around with this stuff and maybe come in here. And yeah, maybe that's uh, zoomed a bit too much. I'll take that out a bit. And um, you know, maybe put it down to about here. You know, find something that works for you. Um, and then once you're happy with it, you're done. Uh, you can start recording and that's it. So uh, when we're recording, I'm gonna be capturing, capturing all of the audio in, in separate tracks. Um, I'm going to show you uh, just a, a little bit of, of how it shows up in the editor. Um, I use uh, Final Cut Pro on a Mac to edit this stuff. Uh, you're gonna be using something different pro differently. So, but the same principles will apply and it should help you out. All right, so there's one thing I wanted to show you when you're getting ready to set up your uh, VR recording and that is a setting in DCS itself. So you wanna go into uh, settings and all the way over here to VR. And you see there's a enable HMD mask. You wanna make sure that is deselected. All right, it's like this. When you do, you notice it carves in um, the edges of, the, um, of, your, of your image. And that's really just because that matches up with your the headset that you're using. So you're not wasting uh, resources rendering stuff that you don't have to. But look what it does here. See in, in, in this, in your um, OBS settings, you're gonna have to move things around to, and zoom in and to get rid of that, that part that doesn't actually isn't actually rendering so I just turn that off and then I stick with the square mirror that I'm recording what this does is it maximizes all of that left side of the display when it's uh, when it's cropped you're missing out on just a little sliver of that left side and and it's already offset as it is uh, to the right so I want to get as much of that real estate as I can All right, so here we are in my video editing software. I use Final Cut Pro on a Mac. Uh, I just wanted to illustrate what I do with these audio tracks because it's, it's kind of an important part of, of the whole flow that I do and what I was showing with uh, why do you want to use those virtual audio cables. So down at the bottom here, you'll see my video timeline. And below that, I have the in-game sounds. Below that is, uh, is uh, SRS but everyone else talking. I think there's two uh, Mavericks going off right now. All right, next one is me. Echelon, 
that northern S-18 launcher. All right. The last one, uh, it, or next one down is voice attack, where I get all that chatter from Bicom Pro. That. And the last one down here is my uh, microphone on my headset. Now I've I've muted that down, but uh, I might use it whenever I want to illustrate what I'm doing in Voice Attack or Vicom Pro. So, as you can see, my voice is quite loud, and it's way too loud. I usually want to keep it on this meter between uh, negative six and negative twelve. So all I can do is just come over here, and I can drop my voice down to somewhere around there. That's probably better. Let's see how it sounds. Echo on that northern S-18 launcher. Yeah, so maybe that's good. I might bump it up one more. There we go. Uh, this uh, stream is also a little bit loud. I think there's two uh, Mavericks going off right now. See, it's a little bit loud, so I'm going to pull this down maybe about three. I think there's two uh, Mavericks going off right now. There we go. That's good. And then the uh, background sound, I don't necessarily necessarily want it too loud, so I can pull that down so it starts fading into the background. And lastly, this chatter, I want to I want to drop that down. I usually go down to about negative five. So let's see how it sounds. That's that background chatter. Here comes me. Pickle on that northern S-18 launcher. And the other guy. There's two uh, Mavericks going off right now. Yep. Okay. Only two. Only two SA2 launchers left. Who's gonna get it first? <laughs> Spoiler, I did. All right. So that's really it. I'm not gonna go into too much depth on this because this is you know, this is really specific to Final Cut Pro. But you see what why you want to separate out those audio channels. If you want to get something rid of something completely, you can just come in here and mute it all out. Uh, I can also do things like I have a very loud uh, sp spike over there with the um, announcement of something, you know, some bass being captured by the, the game voice. So I can actually selectively lower that portion down. But again, that's specific to Final Cut Pro, and I'm sure there's ways to do that in other, other programs. But this is it. So uh, grab those uh, virtual audio cables, get them configured, and uh, start taking advantage of being able to have more control over your videos and uh, put out some great DCS content. Unit. You can now call there. Move on to the next phase. Too late! It's too late. That was beautiful. Yeah, guys. Yeah, those guys never had a chance. You want to land here and refuel? You bet. Alright.